Would you like to know if anxiety is caused by a blood sugar imbalance? And how do you stabilize those blood sugars so that you can resolve that anxiety and avoid panic attacks? I'm going to discuss these questions and show you what diets and supplements work in this short tutorial now. Hi, I'm Dr. Janelle Sinclair, biochemist and natural medicine practitioner, and I'm here to help you uncover a biochemical cause, discover a natural treatment, so that you can recover from depression and anxiety. And in this video today, I'm going to teach you about how blood sugar imbalances can cause anxiety, and I'll show you the early warning signs that you may be experiencing a drop in your blood sugars. And I'll give you some treatments and tips to help you stabilize them and therefore reduce the anxiety. Make sure you stick around to the end to learn about two powerful supplements that can help balance your blood sugars. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and hit that bell button so you're notified about our new weekly videos. Now let's start with understanding low blood sugars and how it can cause anxiety. Low blood sugar is pretty simple to understand. Basically, there's not enough sugar or glucose in the bloodstream to meet the body's demands, especially the brain. You see, the brain needs sugar to function. You just can't think without it. Now, hyperglycemia is another name for low blood sugars, and reactive hyperglycemia is a type of low blood sugar that occurs in reaction to what you're eating. And it takes place one to four hours after a meal. Let me explain what happens in your body after you eat, and then I'll show you how anxiety can be caused by low blood sugars and your food choices. So when a healthy person eats a meal, including sugar and carbs, that sugar is released into the bloodstream. There's an initial spike in sugar and the feeling of energy. The body releases insulin then to signal the muscles and the liver to absorb that sugar and your sugar levels drop in the blood. In someone that has good blood sugar control, that your body finds an equilibrium and there's a good amount of fuel for the brain until the next meal. In people with reactive hyperglycemia, after they eat, they get a peak in glucose levels too. But for some reason, their blood sugars fall, fall far too much or far too quickly. When the blood sugar drops, it means that the brain doesn't have enough fuel. Some of the first warning signs that your blood sugars are getting too low, and I suggest you take note of these. Ooh. Oh, yawning. It's one symptom. What's, what's next? Um, um, oh, forgetting your words. Slowed down thinking and foggy brain. When you get these warning signs, you need to move quickly and do something about it to get your blood sugar levels up fast. Other symptoms you may experience due to low blood sugars are fatigue, dizziness, tingling, blurred vision, difficulty in thinking, faintness and headaches. I like to think of these as the first signs of reactive hyperglycemia and they're due to not having enough fuel in the form of sugar for the brain. But when the brain senses that the blood sugar levels has dropped, it actually gets worried because it needs to protect the brain and make sure it has enough fuel. And what happens next is really important for those that suffer from anxiety and panic attacks. The body triggers the release of cortisol and adrenaline, also known as epinephrine, whose job it is to help raise blood sugar levels again. You're probably familiar with these hormones. Do you know the symptoms of an adrenaline or epinephrine rush? High heart rate, sweating, heightened senses, rapid breathing, feeling jittery and nervous? Sounds a little bit like an anxiety attack, doesn't it? 
Well, that's what people can experience if they're sensitive to these drops in their blood sugars. And I've seen clients, even in my appointments, like this. They're doing really well for an hour, and then for some reason something changes, and their thinking starts to slow down. They become a bit dizzy, a bit confused, and a bit fatigued. And then if we don't get some food into them fast, anxiety and panic attacks can come. The hormones which are released to help raise glucose levels and protect their brain can actually lead to irritability, anxiety, anger outbursts, palpitations, sweating and panic attacks in sensitive people. Some people describe this feeling as being hangry. You know that feeling? That if you don't get food quick, you're going to get angry at someone? Well, do you see how low blood sugars can trigger an adrenaline release and how that can cause anxiety or panic? Well, ask yourself, could it be possible that your anxiety is actually caused by low blood sugars? So I have a few more questions for you to consider that may help you uncover whether blood sugars are an important aspect of your anxiety or panic attacks. Question number one, do you get hangry? You know that we just talked about that, where you get that feeling of getting angry because you're hungry? Well, if you do, it may be pretty obvious, but you need to resolve your unbalanced blood sugars. Secondly, does your mood fluctuate through the day? Does your anxiety come and go, or at least get worse regularly throughout the day? Maybe at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., or 4 p.m. between meals. It's possible that low blood sugars are a problem for you. Question number three. Do you eat a lot of sugary or processed foods? Or do you drink sugary beverages like soda, fruit juice, or energy drinks? The foods or drinks that you're eating could actually be leading to a quick rise in blood sugars, which is followed by a sharp drop, and then the release of adrenaline. Another question, do you skip meals, or do you become more anxious on days that you skip breakfast? Although this isn't technically reactive hypoglycemia, but rather low blood sugars due to fasting, by not fueling your body, you may inadvertently be increasing your chances of anxiety by triggering an adrenaline release due to low sugar levels in the bloodstream. Lastly, you may say to me, it can't actually be my food because I actually just wake up anxious. Well, if you wake up anxious, it's possible that your blood sugars have actually dropped through the night. This may be due to a nutritional deficiency, but also due to food, bad food choices before you go to bed. Did you eat some lollies, a piece of cake, a hot chocolate, or a wine last night? That's a great question to ask next time you wake up anxious. So have you ever experienced reactive hyperglycemia? Or are you familiar with the term hangry? Give me a yes in the comment section below if you have. And welcome to all the YouTube newbies. You'll find the comment section below the suggested videos if you're on your mobile. So let's move on and discuss the treatment of reactive hyperglycemia. And let's start with diet. I'm going to give you five tips today on what foods to eat or avoid to help stabilize those blood sugars. So tip number one. Reduce sugar and processed foods in your diet. So cut out the sweets, the biscuits, the cakes, the white bread, wine, soft drinks, and fruit juice. Sounds pretty simple, eh? I know it's not, and for the first three to seven days, you may struggle with that. And if you have strong sugar cravings, and you're like, of course I can't give up my sugar, consider taking a chromium supplement, which we'll discuss shortly. Tip number two, you can follow a low glycemic index or a low GI diet. This diet basically scores food on its speed to release sugar into the bloodstream. You want to avoid high GI foods that spike blood sugars 
and you want to eat the low GI foods that release sugar slowly and steadily into the bloodstream. Tip number three, add a healthy fat to each meal you're eating. This fat will actually stabilize your blood sugars. Consider adding a small amount of olive oil, butter or coconut oil to your meal. Eat avocado, nuts, nut butter, cheese. So tip number four, while you're first trying to stabilize your blood sugar levels, eat every two to three hours. Have a healthy protein and fat-based snack at morning and afternoon tea. And, listen to me, don't skip meals. Tip number five. Add quarter to half a teaspoon of cinnamon in your food every day. Easy tip. This spice is known to help stabilize blood sugars. And I have a bonus tip for you. If you're starting to experience the warning signs of low blood sugars, do you remember those? Like yawning, forgetting your words, your thinking slowing down? Get some high quality food into yourself fast. This could be something like apple slices or a banana with almond or peanut butter, a handful of nuts, some date balls, or quality bread with avocado and that bread should be preferably gluten-free or paleo. Now let's discuss two supplements that are known to help stabilize blood sugars and therefore could be really helpful for reducing anxiety and panic attacks. Number one, chromium. Chromium is great for anyone that gets hangry, has sugar cravings, that's an important one is struggling with their weight or has anxiety. The two forms of chromium I recommend are chromium picolinate and chromium polynicotinate. The effective dose for an adult is from 400 to 1000 micrograms per day. An average dose that I prescribe my clients is 600 micrograms. The more overweight you are, the higher the dose you should consider taking. Supplement number two is alpha lipoic acid. Now alpha lipoic acid is another great supplement to use for unbalanced blood sugars and it is a powerful antioxidant. The effective dose for an adult is 600 milligrams per day. Now chromium and alpha lipoic acid are safe alongside antidepressant medication. If you're on diabetic medication, make sure that you monitor your blood sugar levels when starting these supplements and adjust your diabetes medication accordingly. Now you know a little about how low blood sugars can lead to anxiety and panic attacks. But what you may not know is that there are other physical causes of anxiety, like mineral deficiencies and problems with the gut. I suggest you check out my recent videos on zinc deficiency and anxiety as well as brain fog and that brain fog video actually discusses how a bacterial overgrowth in the gut can lead to depression and also anxiety. And if you found this video helpful please like it and share it with anyone that may benefit from it and hit that subscribe button so that you can keep up to date with our new weekly content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.